with, with a group of um, students and alumni called the Digital Maker Collective, which you can see on the screen, um, on the screen over there. Um, we've been exploring the what what is called the metaverse, which we, we originally started to call call the immersive web. So looking at how we can move from uh, sort of two D experiences of uh, of the web into a more three D experience of the web. So what I mean by three D is that you can move around uh, a three D space in the web. And you can also, uh, uh, and the 3D web is, is available, you know, in lots of different flavors, lots of different ways where you can uh, be in a browser or in an application and move around. The metaverse is really a collection of those worlds, of 3D worlds, but the metaverse is also more about having interactions with uh, other, other users uh, in the space. So it's more a sort of community collaborative space, if you like. Feel free to shout out at any point. Like I say, it's always nice to know there's another human at the end of the line. Um, when we're in this sort of scenario and we've got, for say, 15 people in the space, it feels very natural and very, uh, hey, uh, it feels very natural and very, um, you know, it feels more like a sort of interaction is happening between two humans rather than just um uh yeah feeling sort of kind of not, not there um so so yeah so in terms of uh, the whole point of this session i guess was for, to look at you you guys as as uh, fine art i studied fine art actually at wimbledon so i graduated in 2000 that's one of my paintings behind me um I'm a, yeah traditionally a painter, but I also you know I messed around with technology. I did digital stuff for my degree. I did a lot of Photoshop stuff. Um, so you know the, the idea of artists using digital technology is not is not new. I think it's been very much um, sort of pushed to the forefront in the last year, obviously with everyone kind of being sort of forced into digital which is you know is good for some some people might kick, kick against it there was already people a lot of people kicking against digital anyway and technology and you know that's fine that's good you know we need to question technology and we need to question the the uh, tech dominance uh, you know tech industry dominance and all that sort of stuff definitely do but that doesn't mean we don't engage with it and you know the more the more an artist engaged with technology, I guess, the more you can sort of question it and uh, confront it, really. And also, not just that, you know, give it a language, you know, get, make it, because at the moment, the language of this media, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is is coming, it's not coming from artists, it's coming from people that know how to code and, you know, yeah, artists can code, but, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily coming from artists, the language. So, so I think the more artists we get in there that are not necessarily tech savvy that can go in and sort of disrupt this space, I think the better. So with that in mind, there's um, a few ways you can get into gallery. I think Babette, you, sh you sh shared this with me. This, this was one of Babette's original, um, sort of uh, ideas for um, looking at how we could, you know, get, get art online. Because, you, you know, what you can do is create your website. And as you know, you can create lots of sort of ways of, of making a website. You can do the, um, uh, you know, all the pre-made websites. They're re really easy now. But you kind of fall into a trap with that, you know, because you're kind of, you're, you're sort of buying into a company that's going to host your website and you're, you're if anything goes wrong with that website you've got to you know you've got to rely on that company to f to fix those problems which normally means paying then you've got uh, sites like this which are which are great you know that they're basically sites that enable a 3d interaction like i was just doing where you can go around the 3d gallery space um uh you can create a free account but you can't really do much with that free account you need to pay basically for the more functionality uh, and for the more exposure, you need to sort of pay 
pay more really so they're great you know you know look into them by all means you know what i'm going to show you now is not the be all end all look into you know all the different platforms that are out there and um uh, give them a go literally just get in there uh, and and uh try it out so i guess the 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 next level um is you know is what i'm going to show you now which is re really you know i'm in frame vr so hopefully you all bebek sent out some links and you've managed to either already step into frame vr and have a look at it um and also there were some links examples there of some some galleries that have been um been made by myself and also some stu students um so i think the point of today was we were going to uh, look at some of the ways of adding content into the frame, which I'll do now. Okay. I just want to mention one last thing, which you'll probably see is quite getting uh, a lot of airtime at the moment. And it's very connected to uh, artists putting work online is uh, crypto art. You know, just, just do a little search around crypto art because there's a really big movement going on at the moment. Uh, with NFTs, um, which um, non fungible tokens, which are basically a lot of artists are creating digital art and putting it on these crypto um, uh, blockchain um, galleries and they're selling for like millions, thousands of pounds. So, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely, we're not going to talk about it now, but definitely just do a little bit of research into sort of crypto art scene it's, it's quite interesting at the moment and again the language of that is being defined as we speak and i think the more artists that go into that the better hopefully you've all created an account um and then what you get is a default environment which is this um this is the the out the box environment if you like so if i go up to the top on my menu this is basically where everything lives where all my profile is um my inventory so your inventory is effectively is basically all your all your content that you bring into the uh into the space um you've got your frames so at the moment i've got uh your frames i've got a frame called fine art crit and deck um so you get three three frames uh, to play with. That's it. That's your limit. If you want more frames, you can create another account with another email. Um, so you create a new frame. So if you want to create a new frame, try and keep the name quite simple because basically what you're going to have with frame VR is free. So you're going to have frame VR um, dot IO forward slash whatever your name of your frame is. So the frame I'm in now is called fine art. So, yeah, uh, nice and simple. People can just go to frame, type right, find art at the end, and they'll make it into this frame. Um, so in terms of the environments, like I say, you get these out-of-the-box environments. So I'm in frames, this frame, and then environment. So you can switch the environments, but obviously once you've created your space, you don't really want to switch the environment because what will happen it will go all the stuff that you've put in there the content will not obviously align to the, your environment so i'm going to quickly switch this environment to zen office okay so you can see i've i've uh, i've moved to the zen office oh someone's joined us hello so yeah, someone's obviously, um, yeah, you're welcome to join us. If you want to hop in to the frame while I'm doing this, uh, come and join me. Uh, so you can see, look, that's that screen I had on. That's the metaverse text there. It's just sitting in midair now um, because I changed, which actually looks quite cool. I quite get, yeah. So, so happy accidents can happen. Again, that's part of the experimentation. Um, so these little blue lines on the floor, these are, um, are kind of zones. So if I step into this zone, 
you hear a little ting and it's basically saying that we uh hello whoever this is um we we can only hear each other in this space so if anyone was standing outside this zone they wouldn't be able to hear us so these are quite good in terms of um having you know if you've got 30 people in space then it's good to have those um those uh, sort of private uh, speaking areas because everyone doesn't talk over each other so in terms of uh, we'll change the environment again so frames this frame uh, Zen office so you've got an expo center which is quite corporate -y kind of thing you know it's go and have a look at it you've got a neon hall yeah so again yeah we've changed the environment look metaverse is still there it's now sort of hanging here um uh yeah this is again another pre-made world so so we had quite a a good uh event in here recently where one of the alumni members of the digital maker collective uh basically did a presentation around uh, the avatar and what she did was set up a uh, sort of objects images and 3d objects in these spaces and then she used this as uh, to guide the 20 odd people that are in that talk around the the presentation. So we'd go into this space like this and then she'd talk about stuff and then we'd go into this one and she'd talk about the stuff in there. So it made it very, you know, it, it, we got away from that sort of um, uh, power, PowerPoint craziness. OK, so that's that. I won't go through all the environments. Um, you've got the gallery small, which we uh, that's the one you normally start in. You've got the atrium, which is, again, it's quite good. And we use this as our um, as our base for our collective. Um, it's quite big. If you hold your shift key, you can move. Oh, God, I'm making it. If you hold the shift key, you can move fast um, around the space, especially in some of the larger spaces. So, yeah, I'll try and go slow because it can make you feel sick if you're um, watching this. Uh, you can go upstairs. This little balcony. So, yeah, so you might not want to go for a conventional sort of art gallery space you might want to sort of go for a, a more of a social um collaborative space maybe honestly just stick your mic on and shout questions if you got any um uh what's the next thing i'm going to show so that was the atrium and then you, there's an outdoor theatre, which is quite good, like an amphitheatre. Let's go there. Why not? I don't know what time we've got. I'm happy to, to go on. But have, have we got a time I need to keep to? Because obviously I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to show as much as I can. Um, yeah, there's something starting at 11. Okay, I'll go faster. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So here's your amphitheatre. Again, again that, that might have a good use for it. Um, and then you've got a... Uh, Team Suite, uh, there's a small, a large gallery here, which they say large gallery, but uh, you know, it's, it's not that large and it's actually smaller than the other one. So, um, you may, it's taken a bit of time to load. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, it's quite a, quite a different kind of gallery. Um, and then if you don't want any galleries, you can literally just create an empty. And this is a totally empty space. OK. Uh, so in here, you could uh, you could potentially import your own uh, environment, um, obviously within limits. And we'll talk about that now. So I'll go back to the gallery that we're in, just the normal gallery. So, so let me explain a little bit about Frame VR. So it's it's free at the moment. It's in beta, which means it's in development. Um, 
and they're, they're going to release it as a as a final application. Uh, and I guess I I yeah that there will be I guess at some point some sort of business model that's applied to it that will offer more functionality uh, than you get at the moment with the free stuff. And that might involve quite a lot of customizable stuff. Um, so at the moment, you're kind of fixed to these environments, unless you create your own environment. But that's that's a, a sort of level of complexity that, you know, if, if you're happy with, you can do, but also has its limitations, like I say, because if you're bringing a big model in, then you're already starting to um, starting to affect performance. Um, the, but saying that, the some students that have made frames, the links that are sent out, have a look at those links at some of the uh, art students that have been creating frames, because what they've been doing is uh, using images to cover the walls or um, changing the color of the walls by putting um, like a just a JPEG image of a color on. So that's one way of doing it, but it's uh, it's a bit fiddly, not ideal. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is uh, for like a conventional gallery, if we wanted to say import an image. So let's say I wanted to put an image on this wall here. So the first thing you need to do is obviously prepare your content. So I would suggest you kind of do as much of that beforehand. Um, so you know, hopefully you all know Photoshop and you all know how to um, how to um, sort of manage the size of a JPEG image. So when when you come to import, and if you don't, then obviously you seek support on that because that's that's what you can get support on. Um, so when you come to up, up, upload your uh, content, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can add directly into the frame where you can see add image, add photo, add da da da. Or you can uh, add to the inventory. So if you add to the inventory, it just goes into your backpack, if you like, and then you can um, chuck it in uh, to your frame. What I tend to do is just go straight to the add to this frame bit. And then what I do is also tick the also add to inventory. That way it goes in your backpack, but it also goes into your frame straight away. Um, if you look on each example of content you can bring in, it actually says exactly what you can do. So it's saying here you can upload a PNG uh, or a JPEG image with a file size of uh, 10 megs. Now, I would not bring in a whole load of 10 meg um, files because you'll, you'll overload the platform and it'll take a long time to, um, to to load up so I would try and keep especially if you're get, getting say 10 images in there I would try and keep everything down to a couple of meg each if you can the images um, it doesn't really make much difference you can uh, have a really good quality to your meg image for sure um, so JPEGs normally but PNG so obviously PNG provides that transparency so if you've got a png image you that's a good way to do text so like that metaverse here is a png so that um that's been made in photoshop and then exported as a png which provides the transparency so you get that sort of uh, text there's no sort of image there a uh, background image okay so i'm gonna add image uh Browse. I've got an uh, image here. If I hover over it, it's um, three. Uh, uh, this is nearly four meg image. So it's quite a large image. I wouldn't necessarily put a four meg image in, like I say. Okay, so that's kind of placed my image just in the frame. It hasn't put it directly on the wall. So this is where you need to do a little bit. So you see it's just hanging, it's just floating in the air. Um, so this is where you need to orientate yourself in the 3D space um, and start to position this image. So I would totally recommend that you 
get a mouse with a wheel on it. Um, don't try and do this on your trackpad on your laptop. Um, definitely use a mouse. You can do it on the trackpad, but it's, it's really awkward. So to edit this image, we need to go into edit mode. And there's two ways you can do that. You can drop down the menu and just click this over to edit mode here. Or you can hit the space bar key and you see this little pop up thing happens here. Um, and then click edit on that. With this space bar, if you're looking up like that, sometimes you don't realize that the space bar is open. And when you try and move, like I'm doing now, um, to move around the space, you use the WASD keys on your keyboard um, and the mouse to move your head. I can't see that wheel. So that's like a common mistake. You, you, you just make sure you hit the space bar, close that wheel, and then you can start moving again. Also, when you're in edit mode, make sure when you're finished editing that you un take yourself off edit mode because you can accidentally move stuff around the space. Okay, so I'm going to click on that image and it's saying this is the UT UT. Um, uh, I can scale it so I can make it larger. I can rotate it if I needed to, but I don't want to rotate it. I want to keep it nice and flat so it sits on the wall. Um, scenes we'll talk about in a minute, um, and this other stuff we'll talk about in a minute. So what I need to do now is position this on this wall, and I'm using my mouse just by grabbing it, and I'm using my wheel on my mouse to move it backwards. And I moved it right into the wall, and I don't want it in the wall. I want it to sit on the wall, so I'm literally just pushing it in the wall and out the wall. So that's sitting on the wall and then I can uh, expand the image as big as I want it and then I can lock the position uh, if you want zoomable that basically puts a magnifying glass on the top and I'll just show what that does um i'll close this i'll come off edit mode so you can't do anything until you're off edit mode in terms of functionality so yeah if you want uh if you now hover over it you see this horrible but well, i think it's horrible the blue thing sort of appears but it kind of brings the image forward like that so you can see it if you hover off it it goes away the blue thing it's kind of it's, it's nice in terms of functionality because it means that people can um sort of see the full image but actually i especially if it's uh, you, you don't want this on your artwork all the time so i tend to this is kind of a new bit of functionality that they added so i tend to just take that zoomable option off if people want to see the image up close they can you know you're in the 3d web so you can just go up close you can go up really close to it if you wanted so, so basically, that, that's the same method for everything, really, when you're uploading. Um, we'll look at 360 photos in a bit. Um, uh, add video. So again, here, when you're adding a video, you've got options. Uh, videos can be MP4, um, uh, all, all those, uh, and it's 100 meg max. Again, I would try not to put a ma loads of really uh, massive videos in. So if I wanted to upload a video, it's the same principle. So where are we going to put the video? Over here. Uh, add a video. It does compress it. So as long as your video is under 100 megs, it will accept it. Um, let's have a look. as well i'm just trying to find the video now okay so i've got a quite a large video here which is 70 megabytes um and what it will do is upload your video it'll compress it and then it'll let you know when it's ready. So there'll be like a placeholder thing saying it's processing. 
So yeah, this is 70 megs. So so yeah, what I didn't say from the beginning is obviously the advantage of this is that it's browser based, that you don't have to, of this platform, is that you do not have to download an application. You're literally just putting your URL in and you're entering via a browser into the 3D web. Um, I guess that's the difference from other applications where you have to download the actual program uh, onto a computer. Some some applications you need um, you need um, what, what do you call it a um, kind of more powerful computer or what have you. So uh, and this can be accessed on the mobile as well on your mobile phone uh, on Mac on PC. So it's quite you know it's it's, it's probably the more accessible of the um, sort of platform, especially if you want to get, you know, people to visit your your um, gallery, your artwork, and also if you want to collaborate. Okay, so you can see that's color, that's uh, processing at the moment. Same principles for everything. So we can scale it up. It's it's kind of hovering in the air right here at the moment. So again, I need to grab it. I need to push it onto the wall. If you want it on the wall, you can have it hovering in the space. You can change the dynamics of the space or use that um, that empty space. I mean, there's, there's a lot to cover and we'll do as much as we can today, but we could pick up a second session when you've all practiced. I'm happy to sort of pick up um, a session of, you know, what questions you have basically when you've tried to do things yourself. I think that's probably sometimes a good, good way. Okay, so that's processing. Um, I tend to put lock on everything because again, if you're on edit mode by mistake and you, you can easily move things around. Um, auto play with the video and loop is quite a good option. So when someone enters your space, the video starts playing straight away. And if I didn't want these assets, you can just obviously delete the asset there. Um, but if it's added to the inventory, it'll be in your inventory here. So you can see uh, my inventory is here and my videos, and it's got my Unity Unicorns video there. If I wanted to delete that out of my inventory, I can just delete it from here. Uh, also, Another way to check the content that's in your frame is to go to frame and then this frame. And then you've got a list of all the assets that are in your frame. So images, I've got these in there at the moment. So what can happen sometimes is you can push a, an asset behind a wall and you don't know it's there. And then suddenly you've got like 20 images in your space, but you've only got two images on the wall. So this is where you can go and just actually see what's in your space and delete all those those mistakes that you've made. So the sounds, uh, there's like a sound control on it. So um, by default, if you've got it on autoplay, when someone comes in, if the sound on the video, it will be playing the sound straight away. Um, obviously, if your sound's working on your on your headphones um, or on your computer, so and you can control that sound, and then you can. Um, uh, control the video as well so if someone just wants to pause the video they can just pause it or turn the sound down they can do that so i would actually do that in your editing before you put the video up i think if you want to if you want to hit people with a lot of sound then go for it but maybe be mindful that when someone comes into a space if they get blasted with sound it can be quite off-putting so you might want to do it quite be quite subtle about how you how you think about saying so, you know sound is super important in you know, a lot of people just think about the visuals and they don't think too much about the sound. Um, so yeah, have a play around with that. You can import sounds as well, uh, audio. So it's the same, just, um, uh, and that is spatial as well. The audio is spatial. So if you add audio the same way that we've just been doing, um, I'll, I'll transfer, oh, there you go. So the video is playing now. So. Okay, I'm still in edit mode, so I'm not seeing those controls here. So I'm going to do the controls. I'm going to. I'm not sure if you can hear the desktop sound. Let me. Uh, 
so you can control the sound there. I don't, I'm not sure whether you could hear that um, because it's coming from my desktop. I'm not sure. Um, so, so yeah. So if you go in the space and press play, you'll you'll hear it. Um, okay. Someone's asking avatar cam. So avatar cam is 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 basically on your. So let's do it with this this dude here. So this is my AV bot, my support. So I've got a. Um, this is sometimes good to use. Um, you know, I have uh, maybe two accounts. Um, so I use another account as like a cameraman almost. Um, so when I'm doing an event, I've got like a. Or for instance, this AV bot at the moment is sharing this screen. Um, so. You know, you, you can start to sort of master the sort of use of um, of good use of uh, the 3D web, really. So, for instance, Avatar Cam is. So, I'm just going to share the camera on the AV bot guy. Share his uh, Avatar Cam, which is effectively me from another angle. Yeah. So. Um, so that, yeah, that that's that provides a. Uh, it kind of breaks the illusion. Uh, a lot of the time, we don't use this um, uh, within our group because it it, we, it kind of starts to go down that road of um, of a bit too a bit too real and a bit too um, what do you call it teams. So uh, in a way, uh, it's quite nice starting to think about the avatar and to think about the sort of representation of the avatar. And obviously, you know, this is a free platform. The avatars are not great, not everyone's not everyone's um, taste. So there are other platforms you can have really quite advanced avatars. You can sort of customize your own avatars. You can customize these avatars, but they're quite limited in the customization. But that's the kind of compensation you need to make, really with a platform like this or you, you can which i'm going to show you in a minute you can switch to um to not having an avatar whatsoever and the experience can be different so i'll just go onto this screen here um so i'm just going to load my an example so if you can see on the menu there's an option in your frame uh, I won't upload all the content because I think it's quite self-explanatory, really. It's all pretty much the same as the image and the video. You just upload it, you add it. The audio comes in as a ball, and it's got controls on it. 360 video, we can, that's more advanced stuff. We can talk about that in a bit. I'll show you an, uh, a 3D model before we finish. We've got 15 minutes, so I'll show you uploading the 3D model and also just talk about the, the you know what you need to do with 3D models. Uh, in order to process those and it's good if you're going to get a bit of tutorials on that that'd be great um, so i'm just going to show quickly the difference between a frame so i'm going frames this frame and at the moment the capacity is 15 so i could have up to 15 people in here and hello whoever that was that joined thank you very much um, but you can have up to 15 people in here which is great um, but the more you use this, you can request, go on the, um, uh, the, if you go on the help pages, you can see there's um, a Discord channel and go on the Discord channel and that's a really good place to have conversation about you know, what works, what doesn't. But you can also uh, contact the frame team uh, and ask for an extension. So one of our frames, we've been using it a lot and they've upped that to 35, so we can have up to 35 people in there. But this is what I wanted to show you. So here you can switch between a single user and a multiple user. So at the moment, this is on multiple user because we've got multiple people in the platform, like I say, up to 15. But if you wanted a... Um, if you wanted a single um, user one, it will literally do this. It will go straight into your into your frame. So with a multi-user frame, you you have to click the connect button when you go in. With a single user, 
basically what's happening here is you're just going straight into the frame um, and you're not going to encounter any other individuals, uh, any other avatars in this space, because basically what you're doing is entering the frame as an instance of the uh, as as a as a single individual instance of that frame. So we so you could have you know, loads of people experiencing this frame at the same time individually. It's basically the closest to a 3D website you're going to get. Uh, and what I've done here in order to link multiple galleries together, I've put these doors in. Um, so I, th these are obviously not doors in the space because I'm work I'm trying to, this kind of goes back to that question, can you change the colours of the walls? No. Can you put doors in the walls? No. But what you can do is put an image on the wall that sort of replicates a door. And when I click on that, I can say, do you want to go to this frame? Um, to this next gallery, I can say, okay, yeah, go there, take me there, and it'll take me to the next gallery, which is effectively an, another frame. Okay, so that's now taking me to this second gallery, and then there's a portal there back to the back to that gallery, back to the gallery one. Um, so yeah, I mean the quality, the images is quite good. So that's you know that's that's something you can have a look at, and also you can play around with the scale of the images, um, which which is a bit of fun as well uh, that you put in. Um, so I mentioned the Digital Maker Collective. That is uh, basically a collective of uh, UAL students from across all the six colleges um, and alumni. And uh, within that collective, they've identified sort of themes, areas of interest. And one of those is uh, digital fashion, and we've got cryptocurrency art, and we've got, um, uh, what else have we got? Um, oh my God, mine's gone blank. Um, it, with live performance. So, so yeah, so, so very much looking at the potential for uh, yeah using sort of the avatars as, as performers really and uh, doing a performance with the avatar and like I say you know th this is really is like a, a sort of a gateway into um, other platforms that can do that you know in in quite a um, an amazing way really I guess the other thing that I haven't really touched on which again we can once you've got your heads around this a bit more and you've started to get your get hands on with it a little bit what we can do is which i haven't shown and i'll demonstrate next time is so this is like a, um, a vr headset um, and basically so if you see in the bottom corner there there's like vr um, so when i'm in this headset i go to the browser in the oculus quest headset these are like 200, 299 quid uh, headsets uh, standalone, so it doesn't need to plug into a computer or anything. Um, so when I when I am in the headset here and I go to this browser and I click VR, I'm literally like I'm in the space, and it feel it's amazing. It's just and and then you've also got controllers which uh, give you uh, hand movements. So so effectively, when you're in VR, you're you're almost like a motion captured. Uh, individual uh, presence rather than just a computer, a 2D uh, PC, sort of, you know, not very animated. So your head moves a lot more because it tracks, this is acts like a tracker, and then your hands move as well uh, a lot more naturally. So in terms of performance, that can be quite an interesting uh, thing to experiment with. And then sound, yeah, that's an issue because you've got latency. You know, I, I think all these are quite interesting um, areas to explore. Okay, I am going to quickly just show the the uh, 3D objects. So, again, the two options add to this frame. So the streaming screen, that is basically what I add over there where I'm sharing the screen. Um, I'm showing a, 
a screen from another computer and that is a streaming screen really and you can also have a um you know show your face as well if you want to do that a whiteboard is uh basically uh, you know it's quite good we have a bit of fun with a whiteboard so if i want to add a whiteboard um it's what we do at the DMC is basically there's a couple of whiteboards on the wall and we, we just sort of, um, or quite a lot of people just mess around and do collaborative, um, collaborative doodling as we're kind of talking. Um, so yeah, it's very basic, but it's kind of, um, it's good if you just want to quickly sort of uh, show, you know, do something. Uh, models, right. So 3D models, this is where you probably need a bit of support if you haven't got much experience in the 3D model side. Um, there's two ways to upload and you only see these two ways to upload. This really confuses people. If you add to this frame, if you go to add to inventory, you only get the option to upload via Sketchfab and not directly from your computer. So if I was to add a 3D model into here and I, will, I want to, I didn't have my own 3D model, I can search for a 3D model uh, through Sketchfab. So anyone that doesn't know Sketchfab, Google Sketchfab, uh, it, as it says, it's awesome. Um, it's basically a big library of 3D objects and it's very useful for bringing, um, uh, for finding, I've built whole frames just on stuff that I found on, on uh, Sketchfab. Um, you know, it's got everything. It's, it's just quite amazing. It's an amazing community and add to that community, create your own account and put your own 3d objects in there as well. Um, so you go to browse library. Um, I don't know. Let's see, I haven't searched paint. There's a paintbrush there. So I've just put a search in there and I'm getting all these things for paint. Um, and painted fruit tart, nice. So this is where you need to be a bit careful because 3D objects can really impact on the performance. So ideally you want to make sure that the poly count, which is the amount of um, the amount of sections that the 3D model is made up of. Um, so the more polys, the bigger the file, the less uh, poly, uh, polys, the, the, the smaller it is, um, but obviously the less detailed it is. So I would always go for up to 10,000 polys because you know you're going to get a, uh, a 3D object that's not going to, um, going to overload your computer. It says you're going to need to log in. So it's logging me in, accept. So you need an account. So just set up an account if you're going to do this and then you just click import and then your 3d image should just drop into the space hey there you go so i've got a, a nice looking barrel there that someone's made for me it's fully 3d so i can move around it i can edit that the same way i can edit all the other stuff I could put it up in the sky there if I wanted. I can enlarge it. If I really wanted to get quite... Again, you know, you don't have to follow convention. Have a bit of fun with the gallery space, you know. Make it, make it. you know, you, you can do something that essentially is, you know, why replicate reality when you can do what you want? So, you know, do convention or... or not so there you go you can kind of move it around again i'm going to lock that in position if i wanted to add a link to that i can put a link to a frame so if i wanted to do like a, um, uh, a link to another frame i can do dmcxr which is the digital maker collective space set frame link and then when I click on that barrel, it'll. I need to come off the edit menu. When I click on that barrel, it'll say, do you want to go to the other frame? I'll say, yeah, and it'll take me to the, just to make it collective. Um, base camp, 
which is a good time to basically say that if you wanted to come and join the DMC, you're more than welcome. Just email me and I'll send you some information. We meet um, we meet in this frame uh, twice a week on Tuesday evenings and Thursday evenings, and then we go off into different um, different spaces. Um, we don't stay in frame VR. We go to alt space. We go to different parts. We're sort of messing around. So here's, here's the sound. The sound balls here that are playing music at the moment uh, that they come in and you can press play controls on that so I, I would see the frame vr as uh entry level into this 3d metaverse space right so i i, I would uh, and you, what you could do is in the um let's go back to uh frames your frames. Uh, someone's at the door. <laughs> uh, what was the question? Yes. So if you go to the uh, frame and then change it to a blank space, then this is where you could create your, you know, you. So, so that barrel, say, imagine if that barrel was your art gallery. Obviously, you'd have to make it really large if you wanted an art gallery barrel. Um, but obviously, if you made your own space, your own environment, then this essentially could be your space. There you go. I'm in the art gallery. So yeah, so if you've if you've created your and we've done it before, where we've created our own um, our own three D buildings. I'm just going to come off edit mode. Uh, actually, I'm going to take off the link for this because every time I click the barrel, it says, "Do you want to go to that space?" And I do that. Um, I'm going to come off edit mode. So yeah, you kind of get the gist. I'm kind of. This is where you can have a bit of fun, really. And you've got to also just accept, you know, this is a free sort of platform. Um, and if you want to go into more advanced stuff where you actually want to create your will build your own massive environments, then that's the kind of thing you can do more advanced stuff in other applications like Alt Space, for instance. We're but will building massive spaces at the moment. Okay, I know everyone's got to go. Thank you very much. I'm more than happy to do a follow up session once you've got your hands on and given it a go. And email me. Thank you, you very much. Thank Cheers. you very much.